On this week's Gadget Show Web TV, John's testing the iPhone 4, I bring you this week's tech news, and check out some of the best augmented reality apps. Hi and welcome to this week's Web TV. I'm Pollyanna Woodward. Later in the show, we'll be looking at some cool augmented reality apps for your PC and your smartphone. But first, John's taking a look at Apple's brand spanking new iPhone 4, which has got Apple fans in a frenzy. With queues of up to 700 people and over 600,000 pre-orders, the launch last week was absolutely amazing. But with the stories about the signal dropping out, does it really live up to all our expectations? Well, as always, we've handed it straight to Mr. John Bentley to find out. I've been playing with the new iPhone 4 for a few days now, and most of the improvements are really worthwhile. I'm particularly enjoying the high-definition retina display. The 960 by 640 pixel resolution is way up on the 480 by 320 of the 3GS. The colors are brighter and stronger, and it really is a great screen for viewing your photos back or doing some web browsing, particularly in domestic environments. Not quite so good in bright sunlight outside, but you really do notice an improvement. The camera's also an improvement too. I know on paper it doesn't necessarily look particularly spectacular by smartphone standards with uh, five megapixels and a single LED flash, but in practice it really is very good indeed. The color reproduction is excellent and the tiny flash does a great job of illuminating even modestly sized rooms. It really is much better than you'd expect. The portraits can come out rather lurid with eerily white eyes. It's also got a 720p HD video capability, and that's pretty good too, especially when you combine it with the built-in app for trimming your video, or indeed the fact that you could get an iMovie app for $2.99 from the App Store that really is quite fun to use. And the forward-facing camera with FaceTime video calling over Wi-Fi seems to work very well. Here's Tom, the cameraman, who also has an iPhone 4, giving me a call. I'll accept it. And it's now connecting. And fairly soon I should be talking to him over FaceTime. And there Hello, he Tom. is. Hello, Tom. Hi there, John. Filming going here. <laughs> the battery life's considerably better. I think you're more likely to get to the end of the day without a recharge. The multitasking is useful and the phone feels considerably quicker than the 3GS. For example, we found it about 20% quicker than the 3GS loading the Gadget Show website over the same Wi-Fi network. One thing I'd really hoped they'd improve with the iPhone 4 was the strength of reception, rather a weak point on the 3GS. It should be better in theory because the antennas are now mounted round the outside of the case. And Wi-Fi reception, I think, is better on the iPhone 4 than the 3GS. I find it much easier to retain a signal from the router when I'm wandering around the house and going outside into the garden. However, the um, 3G reception, I think, is rather poorer than on the 3GS, both for the amount of bars you get on your signal strength meter and for the throughput of data on websites. Slower, I think, usually on the iPhone 4. And that's before you start holding the phone by the bottom left-hand corner. As has been much publicised and much discussed on websites, this sends the signal strength meter shooting down. Um, in fairness, I haven't found this has lost me a call yet when I start holding the phone in the unapproved manner, but it's not very reassuring. Overall, though, I think the improvements Apple have made to the iPhone are sufficient to keep it in its position as the best, most desirable smartphone in the world. Those reception problems, though, are a bit of a worry in the background, and if they're not solved, I think it's a real pity that such a premium product from a respected company could be let down by such a basic issue. Right, it's time for the news. And first up, BT has signed a deal with Sky to bring Sky Sports 1 and Sky Sports 2 to their BT Vision service. This means BT Vision customers will be able to watch Sky Sports 1 and Sky Sports 2 from August the 1st, just in time for us to forget about the World Cup as we get started on the Premier League on August the 14th. 
There's no news on the pricing, but those details will be revealed soon. So for those of you that don't want to subscribe to Sky, but still want Sky's premium services, then you're going to be able to get the sports. And let's hope you may even be able to get Sky One and Sky Movies. Keep your eyes peeled on our news page for more information as soon as we get it. Next, Amazon has just introduced audio and video to Kindle's e-reader. But surprisingly, the new features are only accessible on Kindle via Apple's app rather than its own dedicated Kindle device. The new update will add voice narration to digital books on your iPhone, iPod Touch and of course your iPad. It will add extra interactivity to books and usability for the likes of travel guides and instruction manuals. For example, this book, Rick Steves' London Kindle Edition that I've got for the iPad, offers users walking tours of the capital and the author narrates each section that you want. The London Eye marks the start of the Jubilee Walkway, a pleasant one-hour riverside promenade along the south bank of the Thames. If you want to check out some of the new features yourself, they're available in the Kindle store right now. Now, if you've been following our Twitter feed, you'll know here at Gadget Towers we've been hard at work on the new series, which will be on your screens in August. The first challenge is for Jason and Susie to create an ad campaign for the new show using the latest cutting-edge technology. So we've created a virtual Susie using augmented reality. And if you would like to see that for yourselves, all you have to do is go to 5.tv forward slash virtual Susie and follow the instructions. But if that's got you hungry for more augmented reality, then stay exactly where you are because I've got some that will keep you occupied for hours. Augmented reality is basically a term for a real-world scene combined with computer-generated imagery. It's a technology that's gaining momentum for PCs and for smartphones. There's a wealth of apps that are using it to create amazing visual tech. So I'm going to separate the digital wheat from the pixelated chaff and take a look at some of the augmented reality apps that vary from functional to just plain fun. First up is Arcade Reality, which is a great introduction to augmented reality games. In arcade reality, the camera and game combine to make the alien invaders fly around your body in real time. Their laser beams and missiles attacking from every angle. The attackers pop up on your phone using the real-time background as the backdrop. Now this is great fun and keeps you active as you move your iPhone around to spot and shoot the aliens. You can actually unlock power-ups and bonus levels. And if you think you do well, you could even post your score to their Hall of Fame and see how you match compared to the other players around the world. Now, if you're in a strange place, or like me, stuck in the office, and you want to go to the pub for lunch, it can be a bit of a chore having to go to Google Maps and see how far you've got to go. Well, not anymore with the Labar app. All you have to do to open up the Labar app is wave your iPhone in front of you, and the combination of the camera, compass, and GPS are all used to find your local bar, giving directions and all the information you need. And once you've found your establishment, you can rate the bar and even send it to your friends if you want them to meet you there. It also works abroad, so all you have to do is select the country and the area that you want the bar in. Right, well, I'm off to the pub. But it's not just smartphones that are utilising augmented reality, as there are now loads of websites that are incorporating it to different effect. Toyota have just launched an augmented reality site for their new iQ. All you have to do is print off these two pieces of paper from the site, put them in front of your webcam, the webcam detects the image and then brings up on your screen a 3D model of the car. It's pretty impressive. This one in particular shows the model of the iQ in 3D motion, but it's moving so you can see the wheels moving and the reflection of the outside world across the panels of the car. If you put this one, however, in front of the webcam, you'll actually see the 3D model of the car, but if you just move it, it actually expands so you can see the components of the car, how it works and of course the seating plan inside. It is amazing technology that you have to see with your own eyes and with this technology available, who knows what the future holds. And finally, for all of you budding graffiti artists out there, we've got virtual graffiti. It's a great mix of augmented reality, viewing tags and geolocation in your territory. It just uses a GPS in your phone to tag your location. Then you can take a photo and create your work of art using, of course, your artistic flair. Then once you upload, you can now have the satisfaction knowing that you have left your mark somewhere and it can only be found using augmented reality. Well, that's all we've got time for this week, but we will be back the same time next week with more tech news and reviews. In the meantime, you can always check out our Facebook and Twitter pages for links to our latest updates. See you next time.